Robert Gleich, MD, and I'm the medical director and the chief scientist here at the Center for Human Reproduction in New York City. We live in difficult times. The coronavirus has uh, made everybody's life difficult and sometimes the world difficult is still an understatement. In many ways, we here in the US are still much better off than many other countries, but that doesn't mean it may not get worse before it gets better. Uh, like anybody else, our patients and you out there who is just watching uh, our videos, likely because you may be a patient or may be considering becoming a patient, uh, certainly somebody who has encountered some fertility problems. You under these circumstances obviously face difficult issues. Should you enter treatment? Where should you enter treatment? Is this the right time to get pregnant in the first place? Is this the right time to go to a particular center? What if they close down that center tomorrow? What if you are in the middle of treatment and you are diagnosed uh, with the virus? All highly appropriate question to ask. All questions that obviously depend on many, many different outcome possibilities but all questions that we have must address in today's situation and I therefore want in this video to quickly uh, try to give you at least some answers that may be helpful in your decision-making process so whether to start infertility treatment in times like this uh, is obviously an absolutely correct question to ask. And if I can give you some advice, I would say if you're very young and if there's no absolute urgency uh, behind uh, your consideration of seeking fertility treatment or continuing fertility treatment, there is no harm in taking a break. Nobody can tell us how long this craziness will take. Uh, it may be over in 30 days. It may uh, be lasting uh, through the summer into the fall or maybe even longer. There's no way of knowing. And therefore, my advice to those of you who are currently considering initiation or continuation of your treatments is make a decision based on what your urgency is. Unfortunately, infertility treatment is age dependent and the older especially women are, uh, the, the lower the success rates and the harder the treatment becomes and the more costly the treatment becomes. And therefore, if you already know where on the severity scale you are, you should be able to make an educated decision. If you are, however, new to this concept of fertility treatment and you still have no idea whether you are a mild case or whether you're a more severe case, then my recommendation is that you do see uh, either somebody here at CHR or at any other infertility center in order to find out what your severity is. And once you know that, either the things will be over and uh, we will look and the back mirror and laugh about all the crazy experiences we all had during those days and weeks. Uh, or you will have to make a decision that fits your circumstances. 
If you are older or if you know that your ovarian reserve is very low, in other words, if you know that you are a relatively severe case, a very difficult case, a case that needs uh, to be managed uh, on an ongoing basis, then there is the opportunity and the rationale to simply continue what you have been doing before. There is then no reason to stop treatment or to delay treatment because the virus doesn't do per se anything bad to treatment. It doesn't make treatment more difficult except that it is maybe not recommended to take a crowded subway uh, to the office but the treatment itself does not affect the virus and the virus does not affect the treatment. So if you have the opportunity and if you have the medical need to continue, you're welcome here at CHR or we recommend that you simply continue your treatment wherever you have been receiving it as long as that center still offers the treatment. One special group that I have to address uh, here uh, because so many of CHR's patients fall into this group are what we call long distance patients. Long distance patients under our definitions are patients who have to travel to come to CHR. And by that, I don't mean to travel from Westchester or even from Connecticut or New Jersey. Travel means taking, in most cases, a plane uh, or at least a train. And uh, over half of CHR's patients are long distance patients, many indeed coming from other countries. And obviously here we are now facing a problem. As I'm speaking to you today, our president uh, just last night announced a travel ban from Europe and many of our patients come to us from Europe. Um, if you cannot come to New York, then we cannot put you into a cycle. And my recommendation under those circumstances is that you call us, we can set up an instant consultation either by phone or via Skype and this is an important point we will on an individualized basis give you our best advice as to what to do for some of you it may mean once again hey let's wait and see what happens in another month or two for others it may very well be don't waste your time and then we will try to find colleagues wherever you live, whether it is in Europe, whether it is in the Arab countries, whether it's in Asia or whether it's just in Canada. We will look for colleagues who can help us uh, get your treatment either finished, continued or even sometimes restarted. So. We are available wherever you are. Uh, just call us at 212-994-4400 and our staff will try to give you as quickly uh, an appointment as possible with one of our physicians. And as I said, it is CHR's model in good and in bad times to individualize medical care, and we will do that under those difficult circumstances once more. Thank you for listening.